Hello, it's John Lord here at the Tote Garden Centre and Gardens and it's the, I think it's the last day of February, February the 28th. Tomorrow is February the 29th or might or might be. There's a one in four chances I think it's going to be February 29th. Anyway, uh, um, I haven't done a video for a good while. I was doing lots of other stuff. We we got rid of, we had a digger in and we got rid of a lot of big plants and Digger did a bit of damage, so I went and edged. And when I started edging, I edged everywhere. We just look over here. Edged all the way along here. Wasn't edged in years. And I'm going to make a new bed over there as a result. One thing leads to another. I want to look at one thing over here. When I was away, did uh, Dryopterus Aphenus and Dryopterus Cristata the King, the girls cut them back completely, which I kind of don't approve of, but it's probably the best thing to do. They'll come out really well. We have to watch this plant here. It's Aram Maculatum, lords and ladies, and we have to get rid of it because it will take over. We have to be careful. We're moving one of these to here. To stop kids running through. And these two nice hollies, they're volunteers. They're going to be dug up and, and potted and sold or planted somewhere else. So, no, look at this. Lovely common area which kind of kicks off the non bulbous spring. The non stuff that's not bulbs. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, we have gooseberry plants over there. Um, I'll be, I'm sort of busy here at the moment. Um, um, uh, we're going to do a bit of cutting back. There's lots of cutting back to be done this year. This border here. Cut back the hack and the claw, that's to be cut back. All this stuff here to be cut back. Or you see, sometimes the plant tells you that's dead, that's last year's. That's the eupatorium, that's, that's that done. We have a bit of fennel, we cut back the fennel, last year's fennel. And all the other bits, we're going to put them back in a, in a while. Um, what do we do with dogwood? Now we'll have a look at it. That's the lovely uh, Cornus alba elegantissima. It's got the red stems in the winter, but it has lovely variegated foliage in the summer. And it's really, I, I think the one that's the Siberica, which has the red, redder stems in the winter, but just boring green leaves in the summer, I don't think it's worth it. I think you're better off going one that's slightly less red, but you get the bonus of the good variegated foliage in the summer. Now, let's have a look where when it was cut back before. You can see the cut mark. Last time it was cut back, it was cut back to there. So I, when you look at plants, just look at them before you do anything and try to figure out, let the plant tell you. See where it was cut back before. So what do we do with this? I think we give it a light cut back. We'll do a little bit. Now, before we do that, I want to show you this. It's a sharpening stone. And a uh, customer in the garden said the last week asked me had we got sharpening stone. So I went up and looked and it was 20 quid, 21, I think it was 21 euro, very expensive. And it was a Felco, uh, but that's a really good make. That's, um, sac my sack of hairs is Felco. And years ago when I worked in Mackey's, uh, we had to be very careful at the Felcos because they were stolen a lot. Uh, thieves might know a lot about horticulture, but they know good sack of tears. So I remember one Monday coming uh, coming in and behind one of the cabinets, there was a few empty uh, boxes where the Spelkos were in and the Felcos had been taken. So Felcos are great sack of tears. So anyway, a woman asked me to show, wanted to know how to how to use it. So I got I couldn't find my old one and I got, I got the Felco. Uh, I think that's the rough and that's the smooth. And I couldn't believe the difference when I used it. How I, I, I haven't been using a sharp secretaries for a long time. And this is what you do. I learned in Germany, I used to spit in them in Germany, but we won't do that. 
you, you do it like that. And this, see there's four parts, four sides. The, the flat side, the, not, not, not the, the curved side, and the part there's angled. You don't do that side, you don't do the other sides. And you do this. Like that. So. And then you do use this side. And it works for, for shears and it works for loppers. Really, really good. And then you just make sure there's no bores here. I just do that. But it's, that's the side. And that's how you do it. Or you might lean it against something. Make it easy. But if you have a sack of hairs for more than a year, it will be slightly blunt and it won't work as good. Now, that's that done. Now we just see how it works. It's actually, it's actually cutting the leaf like a scissors. It's so sharp. So I'm not saying to get a, a Felco one, but get a good quality sharpening stone. It's really well worth it. Now we'll just see what happens here. I think we bring it back to about there. You won't go mad. And this is important. That's the cutting edge. And that, you always bring that down so it opens up. You don't do it like that. You always do it from the top. So as you're cutting, it opens, it's opening up and you use a little bit of leverage, not too much. If you use too much, you'll tear it. A little bit of leverage, real easy. So that's what we're gonna do. And we'll just self-seeded in here and we'll remove that. It's a Galegia, uh, really, really related to lupins. Very nice, you don't see them around much, but we, 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 we pot that up or maybe we'll, maybe we'll uh, plant it somewhere else. They were very popular in Victorian times, but they used to stake, they need to be staked really. I don't know how they'd work in a Chelsea shop, but in Victorian times, gardeners are to a penny. And if you had a few, a few bob, you'd have maybe three or four gardeners working for you, so they'd be staking everything, but that's, that's where the day is gone. Anyway, that's, that's a little bit done. Now, if you wanted to, you could cut that to the ground. You could start from scratch, but I'm, we're not gonna do that. But you decide yourself. And why do you prune? You don't have to. You could never prune that, and it would still be okay. You know, you, you, don't, have, you don't have to prune roses. You just prune them because you want to keep them tighter and stuff. So you, you decide um, how much you want to prune and if you want to prune. Okay, that's that. Next job. Now, what was my next job? Example. That's uh, Raptors Cristata, the, the king. And cut the lot out. And the thing is, if you leave it too late, the new fronds are, are starting to unfurl and you'll end up damaging them. So that's why it's a good, this is a good time to do it. We have ivy grown through. I had someone in last week who were saying, what do I do with ivy all over my garden? What do I do? It's taken over. I said, the only thing you can do is pull it out. It's never ending, but a little and often. It just, ivy creeps up in you. It grows up in you. This is not. Uh, we were we're not going we were not going to do this. I just happened to see it. And look what's grown through it. Two ash seedlings. 
if we were to leave, say all the humans were to leave this area, come back in 200 years, you just have a big ash forest. We need a little bit of light raking. Take this off as well. This is um, a Philip Pendula. Now we just rake it off. Uh, Budley, it wasn't doing very, uh, very well. Budley Wariana, it's north facing. It should never have been put there. There's a lot of dead in it. And that'll just die away. Now, if you're raking out, we're raking out sort of the uh, laurel. If you're raking, be careful that you don't rake back to the mineral soil because if you expose the mineral soil, you get loads of weeds coming up. So you just rake very, very gently. Very gently. Oh, here's our day lilies, Hemercalis, the variegated one. Really nice, really nice plant. Very light. What have we got there? That's a nice weed. What weed is that? That's a fox club. See, we haven't gone back to the mineral soil. There's still organic matter on top. You see, little organic matter. Um, ash seedlings. No. Uh, what happened there was there was a bigger ash tree, a bigger one, and I cut it back last year, the lazy man's way, and it produced two shorter ones or two thinner ones. And will I go the lazy man's way or will I go proper way? There. Did we catch it? Ooh. Did I take it up? No, I admit defeat again. You just cut them right back. I admit defeat. I would have pulled up. The only way I've got them out would be to pull up the fern. I didn't really want to do that. And there is another little trick of the trade. Getting rid of stuff like that, but I'm, I can't tell anyone that. Now, Ivy, have to get it out. Oh, 
can't leave it. The thing about ivy is that when you actually, you know, tackle it head on, it's not that difficult. See, this was let, it should have been done last year. Some people will say, oh, why don't you leave the ivy? Because the ivy will take over. Oh, here's another. This ash. Ah, another ash seedling. The, the, you know, there's an ash dieback disease and uh, did a lot of damage in Europe, particularly European ash stock and came to Ireland and a little part of me, the bad part of me, I was saying maybe that disease will sort everything up. Oh, well, actually, I would hate to see the ash go, but uh, uh, for the bad part in the back of my mind was saying maybe it'll sort out the ash trees forever. But um, the, the ash trees uh, give us more than they take from us. That's all we need to know about ash trees. This wasn't what I'm talking about now. This actually what wasn't what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about something else. Now the girls actually cut those back more, didn't they? They cut them tighter. Now I think that's okay. Here's an example of a lot of organic matter. What would you do there? You take the leaves off. If you do, you just take them off lightly, like that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna leave them because when the herbaceous plants come up, they hide the leaves. So I think we leave. I think we leave. You can see a prairie garden is sort of half cut back or two quarters cut back. The hedge has been nicely cut back. Completely, completely edged this really bad and put back that, uh, put back that hydrangea a bit. Uh, that's Madame Moulier. I hope it's not cut back too much that it won't, that it will still flare. We have to get rid of that bamboo. We'll have a look. Have something here. But we're also getting rid of a lot of geranium macrohyzum. And there it is again. So I have a feeling there's a bamboo runner going under there.
there. See it. Now there's the tricks to the trade about getting rid of bamboo as well, but we won't go down that road. What has to be done here? There's more, I think. No, that's that's the that's the tree root. That's from the birch. That's just from the birch tree. It's okay. Well, we got rid of it nicely. And what we need to do? Oh, look at this here. Look at your spot at that. Look at that. Oh look, new shoot coming up. Cut it nicely. Now I think that's the good Phylostasis vivax. You could actually, you could actually plant that and it would take a few years, it would grow again. But what we've got to do now, and we, we won't do it now. I need more bamboo. What we've got to do now is just drain your macrohyzum, you to lift most of it and to replant it like this. Just like that. So you plant the whole thing with geranium macrohyzum again. And there's still a bit of bamboo in there, but we we have it on the run. The bamboo on the run. Uh, what was... I didn't even come to talk about this. I came to compare that hydrangea Cut back. That's one of the macrophylla hydrangeas, and if you cut them back too far, you won't get any flowers this year. But we cut it back, it was gone out of hand, we cut it back a little bit and hope hopefully it'll flower. And this was the run of the edging. We changed the edging. See it was here. That was the old run. We moved it out. That's to be go through that now in the next week or two we'll remove all the old ones and lots of new growth coming in that's a, that's a really good variety that it's called black steel well, that's that's that and there's geranium macroisum looking much better that will fill in completely now in about about two months just be a lovely carpet and that's a bit that's made its way into the prairie garden it shouldn't be there just taken up we might leave it. Well, split this into two videos because there's a lot, so much to do. This was area that was taken out. It's all edged again. This side is edged. It has to be planted. Now what I've decided to do is put a shrub, let's say here, herbaceous, another shrub here, give plenty of space for the U-hedge. So don't go any closer than this to the U-hedge. So shrub here, maybe one here, maybe one here, and here's the first one. Yeah, it's actually a tree. Um, what's it say? It says, uh, Malice John for planting, do not sell. Um, I actually found that grown wild, and it's one of the ready leaf malices, and it's quite an upright one. So I decided to keep it and plant it and see what happens. Now we have a tree there, so maybe we have a tree there. 
So maybe, maybe put it here. Maybe here. And I'm also thinking about um, putting this one. This is Prunus and Sisa. Uh, Japanese plum or Japanese cherry and sisa means incised and it has a kind of a bonsai look uh, in the winter when it's, it doesn't have its foliage and it has a little sort of a cherry plum sort of a flower I've never ever used it I've seen it around and it's always good and it will grow in the same conditions as a normal cherry tree they don't mind lime in the soil don't mind heavy soil really easy but never had it I was going to plant it here but if it came out at the same time as that cherry tree it will be one, it might be a bit underwhelming compared with that. So we move it probably here, but we're not sure. But anyway, that's, uh, we're going to do another video immediately because of a load, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to dig a big plant up over there and, pl and plant it here. And that has to go in now. And then we can play around with the ones in pots because they, they're easy to play around with. 